a previous NASA contractual worker cases to have evidence that the Apollo 11 moon arrivals were faked when she worked at the organization a couple of decades prior. At the point when Cindy Holland landed a position at NASA, she was over the moon. Allegorically obviously, not in the way she trusted the space explorers of the time or as they pootled around on the International Space Station. I was an undergrad and janitor for the U.S. Air Force when I connected for the temporary worker position with NASA, she relates. It was the winter of 1996, I was a single parent to a five-year-old kid and was attempting to get into a profession. I was told by a few Air Force representatives that NASA needed to enlist ladies and dark individuals, so I sent them my resume. Inside days, Cindy had a meeting and in the blink of an eye a short time later, was offered a vocation. It was a section-level IT support position, she says. I was excited and alarmed. Cindy cherished her activity. I felt imperative interestingly. The activity was special and fun. I dealt with the PC go-down framework, logged in convenience calls, dealt with the plotter machine from the SR-71 flights introduced programming on clients' machines and set up together PC stations. Cindy's office was appropriate beside the NASA Photograph Lab. That is the place the photographic history was kept, clarifies Cindy. It was beyond reach to most NASA representatives and less escorted. Being arranged beside the lab, she frequently heard the professionals and picture-takers talking while they worked. One evening, she caught two photograph lab specialists talking about the Apollo 11 moon arriving of 1969. I could hear each word they said, claims Cindy. It was just when I heard one of them say I can't accept everybody on the planet succumbed to it. Unquestionably everybody can see it was all phony, one major trick that my ears pricked up. In spite of the outrageous idea of this disclosure, profession disapproved of Cindy, 28 at the time engaged in her work and not needing imperil her activity at all, chose to forget about it. I don't know whether they knew I could hear them, on the off chance that they needed me to hear them. Yet they were being striking about it. I thought they were insane and brushed it off. It was just considerably later, in 2009, that the story sprang to Cindy's mind yet again. I began to wind up plainly mindful of what was happening on the planet and started to investigate different tricks. It began to become alright. The main individual she specified it to was her eldest child Brandon, at that point 18. Brandon had just worked out for himself that the moon arrivals were phony, so I chose to inform him concerning what I'd heard at NASA. He wasn't astonished. Presently 47. A mom of four and living in Phoenix, Arizona, Cindy has as of late turned out to be required with the Flat Earth Movement. Through this, she has found that kindred individuals trust that the Apollo 11 moon landing never happened and that a lot of what occurs around NASA is phony. I woke up in 2009 and I found out about all the phony stuff the U.S. government had done and were doing. Around that time, I recollected a specialist at Lockheed Martin where I worked after I exited NASA, revealing to me the Earth was level. I didn't take it genuinely at the time, it was not on my radar. In May of 2016, Cindy saw a YouTube video about the Earth being level. I was exceptionally astounded, she guarantees. I was captivated and begun my voyage. For no less than two weeks, I was in a stupor, looking into the subject overburdening my mind with data. Cindy reviewed the photograph lab engineers at NASA giggling about how individuals put stock in the moon arrivals and that is the point at which she understood reality. Those specialists, similar to the Lockheed design before them, knew the genuine state of the Earth. As Cindy says, they needed to know whether they worked in the photograph lab. The pilots would bring picture takers and take photographs, they more likely than not seen a huge amount of evidence. After further research, Cindy has concluded that it's an ideal opportunity to tell the world. I needed to stand up, she says. It's too enormous a fact to withhold. I was anxious at first, stressed over the repercussions, so didn't address anybody about it for quite a long time. However, now I couldn't care less who I lose or resentful about sharing this reality. We are largely level earthers, a few people simply don't know yet. 